In this video, you're going to learn how does arm slot become influenced by shoulder tilt in your pitching mechanics and why does one pitcher have a really high arm slot and one have a really low arm slot? Is it okay to be a low arm slot pitcher? Is it okay to be or have a really high arm slot? And how can we diagnose some of those mechanical issues that might cause one versus the other? All right, so stick around. I think you're really gonna enjoy this video on shoulder tilt and pitching mechanics. All right, if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. I'm a former pro pitcher, former baseball academy owner, author of two pitching books. So if you're new here, definitely check out the description. Subscribe to my channel because I've got lots more pitching content. And today's video is going to be on shoulder tilt, arm slot, and pitching mechanics and how all three of those interact to produce either a low arm slot or a high arm slot. Okay, so the first thing I want you to understand is the relationship between the shoulders and the arm. So on a side armor, you can see my shoulder line is parallel with the ground essentially, and my arm is the same, you know, it's in that same spot, follows it, right? So you'd never throw like this. You wouldn't want to throw the low elbow. We all know in baseball that a low elbow means you push the ball, you don't throw very hard. So the arm is always going to be pretty much extended. There'll be a slight bend in it, like a smooth sort of bend, but essentially my arm is always going to oppose the line of my shoulder. So if I'm a side armor, you know, and I throw here, my shoulders are going to be level, and this is like Chris Sale, Mass, and Bumgarner, guys like that. If you throw side, if you throw submarine, your shoulders are going to tilt down the same way, just like an infielder throwing across the diamond. So when you have a higher arm slot, and this isn't necessarily obvious, uh, your arm doesn't go like this. Like my arm's not up higher, and my shoulders are level. Rather, again, this this relationship remains constant. Where if I throw at a higher arm slot, the thing that's moving is my torso. My torso is crunching to take me from high arm slot to side arm arm slot. Again, my arm and my shoulders are not changing. It's my torso lean that changes. Now let's talk about a couple things that influence this. Number one is just your general anatomy and how your body likes to whip a baseball. Why does Chris Sale throw side arm? No one really knows. He just developed that when he was young and he was really good at it. He could throw the ball well. It was comfortable for him and he was successful. You know, Max Scherzer also has a lower arm slot. So it, there's no relationship between being a good pitcher and your arm slot. You can be successful at any one of these slots. You do tend to throw harder over top, especially compared to really low. You basically start to lose velocity every bit you go below um, sidearm. And you probably don't throw as hard for most players sidearm as you do from a little over top. And the reason for that is that you don't get to in involve as much of your torso sort of like pulling and crunching you and producing power that way. You sort of only get more rotation from your hips and you don't get this sort of combination where I'm pushing my chest forward towards the plate. So most players will tend to throw a little harder over top, but again, that's not a, a, a hard and fast rule for everybody. The other thing to remember is, you know, if we're trying to change arm slot, really what we're trying to do is change the way the body crunches. And so what I mean by that is when I land, you know, how does my glove arm interact with my torso? Does it crunch me down like it does right here where my arm slot goes up? Or does it just sort of spin me where my arm stays out? Those are important things to note where you're not trying to, t again, change. You don't just say, hey, little Johnny, just start throwing up here. He's got to do something with this side of his body and use, essentially compress his ribs to go from here to here to get his arm slot to come up. And so a lot of times what you see is when a pitcher has an an artificially high or low arm slot, whether they throw really high over top or they throw more like sidearm, there's usually a reason for it. And so again, before I do this, just preface that it is not bad to throw sidearm. It's only bad to throw sidearm if you throw sidearm because your mechanics are bad. And that does make sense. Just give me a second to, to explain. So if I go down the mound and my shoulders are kind of low and I kind of fall down the mound, I leak a little bit. When I'm here, I can't possibly pull myself up over top and make that crunch to get my arm slot higher. So what happens when I sort of fall down the mound, and with young pitchers they do this, they kind of look like that, they don't use their hips well. When I fall down the mound, my body's only recourse to make power is to rotate. And so because I have this mechanical flaw causing me to leak power forward, my body tries to solve it by rotating and my arm naturally goes lower. Once I'm here, it's super hard to get my arm slot up. It makes no sense. It feels really uncomfortable. So a lot of times a sidearm delivery is a byproduct 
of a poor beginning of your mechanical delivery down the plate. The opposite is also sort of true. So for pitchers that are really high over top, like really high. So everything I would say is qual essentially like in the bell curve, like typical arm slots or somewhere between like low three quarter and high three quarter. These are pretty typical. This is what you see most major leaguers pitch from there. That's what you'll see most kids be comfortable with. When you see a player who's really high, like up here, they, again, they could be successful that way. You've seen guys in the big leagues throw from really high over the top, but most players won't. And with young players, it's often because of, again, another mechanical issue. So typically what I've seen is when players throw really high over the top, they have really tight hips and they have some sort of issue with how they rotate. So what this looks like is when I'm going down the mound and my hips are either, maybe it's the, the shape of my sockets or maybe it's just my anatomy, or maybe I really need to do some flexibility, because I don't have enough mobility in my hips to rotate as well as I need to, my body tries to produce that same power from crunching extra from my side. So it looks like this. Instead of the combination of rotation, I basically just start to crunch to try to get through because I'm not really good at rotating my hips through towards the plate. And that's what you usually see when players are really high over the top is they struggle to get their hips from here to here they're not really good at rotating. Again, those are issues you kind of have to diagnose yourself. It's really hard to give general advice on that here through YouTube, but that tends to be the issue. So again, when we're talking about arm slot, to summarize a lot of the big points here, arm slot is the relationship between your shoulders and your arm, and it's always constant. This is never changing. You're, again, your arm will never be at a different angle than your shoulders. And so what produces your arm slot is the tilt in your torso. And players that tend to have lower arm slots who, who shouldn't be there naturally maybe, they often have problems leaking down the mound. And players who have abnormally high arm slots often have problems with their hips where they struggle to rotate through and so their body crunches extra and they end up being really far like this. A lot of times you'll see their heads leaking over almost like they're trying to get water out of their ear when they're swimming. And that's what you'll tend to see there too. So this can be a, a complex problem to diagnose. If you're a pitching coach out there, you have to experiment a lot of times. Try different drills, try different mobility drills. Sometimes weight room work can help a lot. So you have to just kind of see what works and what sticks and sometimes throw a lot of different potential solutions at the problem. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have a question about arm slot, definitely leave it in the comments section below. And as always, check out the links in this video in the description. You'll find my pitching books, my pitching online courses, more helpful videos and all that stuff from me here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.